Over the past few years, I have fallen in love with the Ender 30 V2. And that doesn't mean specifically the printer itself. 3D printers nowadays have evolved far beyond the limits of what the Ender 3 V2 has to offer. It's more the community this 3D printer has cultivated that I have taken interest to. More specifically, what they do with these printers. The Ender 3 V2 community is infamous for upgrading and tinkering their printers constantly. And while there's something to be said, a lot to be said, for printers that come and can work perfectly out of the box. Take your Prusas or your Bamboo Labs. There's just something extra special about this community because it gives you the idea that everyone's Ender 3 V2 is slightly different, either slightly upgraded to fit their needs or just completely taken apart and put back together again, turned into a completely different machine. And that fascinates me. Ever since I started this hobby two years ago, I have always wanted to do that and I believe I have accomplished this. This process has taken me over four months and it has been some of the most learning-filled four months of my life. My knowledge of 3D printing in these machines before and after these four months is drastically different. There has been so many ups and downs in this process, so many days when I thought I'd never be able to get my printer to work again, and some days when I was triumphant and getting something to work that I didn't think would. In short, it's one of the most fulfilling things I've ever done, and I wanted to capture this process, this experience, and the results of it, put it in a YouTube video, and let other people see it to maybe get inspired to upgrade their own printers, just like the people who inspired me did. So without any further ado, let's see it. So one of the very first things I did was add some new bed springs and knobs onto my printer. It seemed before every single print I'd have to level the bed and that got annoying really quick. So this has actually helped out a whole lot. The next thing I did was replace the normal PTFE tube for a Capricorn one. But in the process I actually broke this coupling so I wouldn't be able to print on the ender until very later on in this process. So this may seem like a big leap, but the next thing I did was replace the original motherboard with the Silent 4.2.7 one. I actually have all of my 3D printers running in the room I live in most of the time, so it's actually very important to me that my printers be as quiet as they can be. And I would really recommend this. The noise difference is actually night and day after this, so for anyone like me who runs their printers in their living room or bedroom, I would very much recommend this. It also gave me a lot of insight into what goes on in the motherboard because before I didn't know what it looked like or even touched it. So it gave me some more experience with that side of my printer and I'm glad I did it. The next thing I added was the dual lead screw upgrade. While the ender works just fine with one lead screw, it just kind of bugs me how one side of the gantry is left sagging. With the dual lead screws, I'm able to level the gantry to the top of the printer and then tram the print bed to the gantry so that the only imperfections left would be warps in the bed. So if I were to get a BL touch, it would only have to compensate for those imperfections and not any imperfections from the gantry. Next, I installed the Red Rex Dual Gear Extruder. Honestly, this thing has just been wonderful. The dual gears really do make a difference. When I was tuning my E-steps for this, there was no difference in when the filament was being melted in a hot end and when it was. The dual gears really do make a difference and I highly recommend this. Plus, it's red. It matches the aesthetic. And right after that, I replaced the hot end fan. Remember when I was saying that I wanted my printers to be quiet? Yeah, the fans on the Ender are insanely loud, so I needed to replace those. 
but the problem was it was a real task finding a fan with both high CFM and low volume. So what I ended up doing was going to DigiKey and putting in the parameters I wanted for my fan and the filters. That way I ended up finding the Sunon Maglev fan. It has 7.7 .7 CFM and only 21 decibels compared to the original's 30. Decibels are logarithmic by the way, so that's a big difference. The only compromise with this fan is that it is 4020 instead of the original's 4010, but that's okay because this fan works like a dream. So I actually did a before and after noise test. So here is the original Creality fan. And here is the Sunon. Pretty freaking cool, right? I think so too. I ended up liking the Maglev so much that I used it as a mainboard fan as well. But as you can see, it's hard to fit even a 4010 in there, so I had to print a new cover out of PETG room for a 4020 fan. For this, I actually connected it using little JSD connectors, and it was really fun learning how to crimp wires and make my own little plugs and connectors. I'm really glad I did it but I wouldn't recommend it the most for moving parts, at least this particular set of JST connectors. I actually used this on my Hotten fan as well, and I experienced some times of it turning on and off depending on where it was on the x-axis. This, of course, is not good, so if you're a little afraid about that, don't use these. But what I did was I just secured the connection with some hot glue, and it has not happened since. So if you have some hot glue on hand, I would say it's fine, but if you're a little nervous, maybe try to find a different type of connector. Moving on to the print bed, the next thing I did was place an insulator under it. This will help the bed heat up faster and also waste less energy heating up since less heat will escape. This thing was super easy. All I had to do was poke some holes through it for the bed screws and just stick it on there. It's very cheap too. And right after that, I replaced the bed. Used to, I could never get bed adhesion on this thing. It was my biggest problem and frustration on this printer by far. I tried everything. I tried a multitude of different print beds. It seemed like nothing would work. But this is the Creality PEI Spring Steel Sheet, and it works like a charm. It hasn't given me a problem yet, and I get perfect first layers sticking to the bed every single time. It is worth every penny. I think this video is a little too positive, so let's tone that down a little bit and talk about the BL Touch. Now, the actual BL Touch upgrade is fantastic. I love having one. It was the installation that was a little iffy. By a little, I mean a lot. So, I installed this BL Touch into the special BL Touch port in the Silent 4.2.7 motherboard. And when I turned my printer on, I smelled the magic smoke. So not knowing what to do, because I used the given cable going into the appropriate port in the motherboard, I reached out to Reddit, and someone directed me to a diagram. And looking at this picture, I could see that the positive wire going into the BL Touch went into the ground wire of the motherboard, and vice versa. Basically, this company had sent me a cable that was completely reversed and guaranteed to short your motherboard. And this was a JST connector, so it could only plug in one way. You couldn't just flip it upside down and reverse it. So basically, they just give you a wire that will guaranteed ruin your motherboard. So I was very angry about this, but I didn't want to send it back just yet. I wanted to see if I could fix it. So what I did, basically a pretty easy and simple fix, I just took the crimped wires out of the JST connector and put them in the reverse order. Very simple, but I'm super glad I thought about this and I will be making a separate short video in the future for anyone who may get this with the backwards cable because this just rocked my world. This was really bad. But aside from that bad experience, the BL Touch itself has been a joy to have. It really works wonders, especially if you run a clipper. As I said before, my mentality is level the gantry to the rest of the printer and then tram the bed to the gantry and just let the BL Touch deal with any imperfections in the bed. And with this process, I have achieved near perfect first layers. Now, this next thing may be my least favorite upgrade. And you may be asking, what could be worse than a guaranteed motherboard short? Well, I'll tell you, this Creality filament sensor. So basically, this thing was so freaking loud. How can a filament sensor be loud? Well, I'll tell you, 
every single retraction my printer would make would cause a squeaking sound to come from this filament sensor. And you realize how many times your printer retracts when you hear a little squeaking sound every time it does. Not only that, but it would shave off bits of plastic from the filament and create a little dust cloud, as you can see. And then I would blow off the dust cloud and the plastic would just go everywhere. It was just the worst. And finally, the worst thing of all, I could see visibly worse quality in my prints because this thing was putting so much friction on the filament that it couldn't do its retractions. So with all that, I had to take this thing off. This thing is basically uneasable, which is a shame because I really want a filament sensor on my printer, but this thing is just not worth it. Basically what I'm doing now is just using a kitchen scale to just weigh the spool and then go into my slicer and see how many grams that print will use. So now we can move on to all of the printed upgrades. First I added some v-slots, I'll admit, just for the aesthetics. I also added some red toppers to the belt tightening knobs and also the LCD knob, both for aesthetics and also we all know the Prusa style knob is better. One really cute printed upgrade is this SD card adapter holder. If you didn't know, taking a micro SD card in and out of your motherboard too many times can actually damage the motherboard itself, so it's better to use one of these adapters that one, you won't be taking it in and out so many times, and two, you can use an SD card instead with more storage. This thing is so cute and it holds everything together wonderfully. Cable chains, cable chains, where do I even start? This had to be one of the most tedious processes out of all of this. It seemed like two out of three of every cable chain I would connect would break, and then removing the broken ones would break even more. I am so shocked that I got all of these together. I actually had to modify a lot of files for this. I've kind of learned that everyone's printers are different and everyone's going to need to support their wires a little differently. As you can see here, this bundle of wires has a little crimp in it. This is because the cable chains would actually stab into the wire right there when the gantry went down. So I actually flipped the bottom cable chain over so that it wouldn't be stabbing right there. And as you can see here, this bed wire has a bit of tension right there, but that is not nearly as much as before. I actually modified this cable chain mount to where it extends out longer. This was because the bed wire was actually being pressed against the frame of the printer. This actually helps remove a lot of the tension from that. I also added this extruder motor mount for my cable chains. The original mount actually had a cable chain link for a different type of chain, so I actually went in and modified it to be my type of chain. I also added this little hook and mount for Rogue Designs Armadillo Flex wire management because I'm planning on adding that. I actually also added a modified cable chain so the wire can have room to go up, but this was not the final design. I made another one that was way more sturdy. Last but not least, I installed the king of printed upgrades, Rogue Designs Minimus Hot and Shroud. This thing does a lot. One, it reduces the weight on your print head by a lot. Two, this thing only has two screws connecting the back plate to the actual printer. So when you need to service your hot end, all you have to do is slide the shroud off and you're golden. No screws, no worries. The fans are also friction fit. Also, it directs the air specially towards the heat sink of your hot end instead of just blowing it anywhere and everywhere. This design has a lot of different options, including a 4020 fan option, which is great. It also supports two 5015 radial fans. Now I know what you may be thinking, isn't that a little overboard for PLA? And yeah, it is a bit overboard. I wanted to go overboard. Personally, I would rather have these two monster fans running at half the speed and being quieter and more powerful than one of the original fans running its butt off trying to cool something. That's just my opinion. And it has really paid off. I'm getting monstrous cooling with this thing. I have been getting great overhangs. So I actually decided to do a noise test before and after the upgrades. As you can see or hear, this has had a great improvement in sound. I wanted my printers to be quiet and I think I have accomplished that. In regards to print quality, it hasn't changed because it actually was not bad before I started this process. It really wasn't what I was planning to tackle with this. What I was planning to tackle was convenience and noise. In my opinion, you can achieve good print quality on just about any printer. 
If you know how to clean, maintain, and tune your printer, you can get good quality out of it. These upgrades for me were basically just for aesthetics and convenience, and honestly, that's what they should be for. I once heard someone say about the Ender 3 V2, they're called upgrades, not fixes, because you can tune a printer to work great out of the box, completely stock. The upgrades are just for fun. And I had a lot of fun with this.